Good morning and welcome back to Southern Utah at our homestead. We're starting things off with, I put the front support on yesterday. I'm gonna put the rear support on today. It was really windy yesterday and it was just, um, the dirt was getting in my face so I didn't wanna do it. But today it's a nice beautiful day out, just light wind. So I'm gonna start off doing that. There's that front one that we did yesterday. It worked out really well. I mean, obviously we would rather have it concreted into the ground, but we're kind of past that point, but that thing's holding it pretty good. So I'm, I think I'm, I'm happy with it. So in the back here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna do one in the center. I'm gonna remove this cross brace right here and then I'll cut it and then do, once this one's in the middle, I'm gonna connect those like to there and then do another one over to here. Uh, and I already got my deck block in there. I'm just leveling all this out before I measure and cut that brace. Well, I got my mark right here this line so i wanted to make it a little bit longer because it is sagging a little bit up there so i was going to do three quarters but then i decided to go with one inch just because i can always cut a little bit off if i need to i'd rather not waste this expensive board uh, anyway so i got my angles cut like marked out on both sides so i'm gonna go ahead and cut this put it up there and see if it's gonna work and then if it does, I'll, I'll start screwing it in. If not, then I'll cut it off a little bit, but we should be good. I'm gonna get my Simpson strong ties, start bolting this thing together, and then I'll cut these bracing on this side and put them, put those on as well. Let's check level. Looking good. Looking good. Oh, here comes Charlie. What's up, buddy? What are you getting into? Let me work. You won't let me grab the drill. <laughs> work gloves are on. It's playtime. Let me get it. Let me get it. No, okay. <laughs> All right, we're in there. All the strong ties are bolted down. Now we're gonna do these cross braces on each side. I don't have these specific strong ties anymore, but I do have, they're for two by sixes, but they're for the nails. I mean, that should work fine. I'll just put them on the inside and then I have the nails right there. Right at 70 and a half. Now that we've beefed up the array a little bit, moving on to my next project, which is, I have these two pieces of plywood laid down, and this is pretty much gonna be the wall inside the shed. It's actually 93 inches, so I did a line. I'm gonna cut that at some point. Now I have all my solar components right here, and some of them are really heavy, especially the batteries. So I'm gonna start just laying them out on this thing so I know where everything's gonna go, have a good layout and a plan for the wiring and everything. And as well, um, some of the heavier items, I'm gonna put some blocking in the solar shed. So I need, I wanna know exactly where they go so that I'm able to do that before I put insulation and then put these boards on the wall to mount everything up. Now I'm gonna start taking all these out, setting them down here and just kind of like moving them around, figuring out where they're gonna go.
I think it weighed 280 pounds a piece. That's a lot of weight on that wall. I think it should be good right there. How high? What height do you want these things? I don't know. Like I, I, think, I think it kind of depends on, I mean, if it's just over four feet. That's pretty perfect. All right, so I think I have it laid out the way we're going to do it. This is our charge controller, so all of the wires from the solar shed are going to be coming into here. And then these, this goes to our inverter, and then into our distribution panel. And then from the inverter will come the batteries, which the batteries are almost 300 pounds inside that crate. So this is just the mounting bracket for one of them. We have two of them. I'm gonna mount this to where this is level, the battery's level with that one. Put one right there, and then put one right here. This is the, the ground of the solar shed, and this is obviously like towards the top of the wall. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just trying to lay everything out so I know where to put the blocking. When I can do that, when I get insulation in, the sooner I do that, the sooner I can put this on the wall and start wiring things up. Seven inches. Because this is a lot of weight, and we're going to put, this is probably 200 pounds. Those batteries are 280 a piece. So we're close to. 900 pounds on that one wall, which is totally fine. I already looked up the like the load you can put on a two by six wall, so we're going to put like 7,000 pounds, I think. But I just want everything to be straight and even and look good. Well, we're going to take some dirt roads in town and go pick up some insulation so we can insulate the solar shed. Now that we got the I guess the arrangement, the layout of our solar components. I went and got some fiberglass, I can't pronounce this name, NOF insulation. <laughs> uh, R19 is for the two by six exteriors, 24 on center. And then the R11 is for our interior wall. It is two by four wall, it's R11, so it's 16 on center. Right now, we're gonna do the 24 on center to get the exterior wall up, put all that in there, and then we're gonna put blocking on top of that, and then finish it off by putting the plywood over there, and then we can start hanging some of these components and next come wires, it's exciting. So let's get to work. I think that's gonna be it for the day. After doing that insulation, I had to go take a shower really fast and then eat dinner and I'm just winding things down for the day. As you can see, we got that plywood on there on the top. That's all we're gonna do for now. Well, we're gonna put on the wall to the right. We're gonna put board over there as well. And we can start hanging all these components up, getting those aligned and making everything look good in there. And then we just gotta run wires. And yeah, that's gonna be it for today. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, today's the day. I don't know if you can see behind me through my dirty back window, but I got a gas truck coming up right now, following me up to the property. We're going about 10 miles an hour, 500 gallons of diesel getting dropped in our new storage tank. Super exciting to be able to have this reserve just in case. I mean, for the tractor and then um, if we need it to put in the truck for a minute or who knows what's gonna happen in this crazy world we live in. So 
that's why we got it. We just want to be self-reliant. I mean, obviously diesel is not being self-reliant. We just having that spare or extra 500 gallons is nice to have as like a safety net in case like gas prices just get too crazy. I mean, they're already crazy, but he's gonna follow us up here. Yeah, let's put some, let's put some diesel in this tank and hopefully there's no leaks. <laughs> We got it about halfway filled up and then the gauge right here started leaking so we had to stop. Well, the fuel up station didn't go according to plan. We got some diesel in there, but it's not full. Let me show you what's going on. So this gauge that tells us how many gallons are in here or how full the tank is, once it gets above this level where that gauge is, it leaks. And you can see there's like a little drip coming off it right now because it's just under halfway. Another thing is I got this inline fuel filter housing. And as you can read that, that says out and that says in. It should be the other way around, which is how I had it, but it didn't flow out the, the hose. So we had to take it apart and switch it. So now it's backwards, but that's the way it's supposed to be. It's just labeled wrong. So it wasn't me, it was the manufacturer, whoever makes that thing. Anyway, and then we had a green nozzle on this thing, but it was a pressure nozzle. And since we have a gravity fed tank, it doesn't work. So I just used the one that was back that we bought the, the tank with. It works fine, but it's just the green one was cool. So I wanted to put it on there. At the end of everything, we did get about 140 gallons of diesel. Figured out the little issues that we had with that tank, which wasn't that big of a deal. So we're gonna probably get either a new seal or a like sealant or caulking or whatever that goes in there to create a seal. That way we can call them back out and fix it. Now I think we're gonna head into town. We're gonna start 
we're gonna start doing solar component install. We gotta get some white paint to put on that board because I don't want it to be I want it to be bright in that room. So we're gonna get white paint and then we're gonna start mounting everything. So we gotta get some lag bolts and everything like that to mount all our components. Pretty sure I have paint on my hands, on my nose, all over the place. We were jamming, hanging out to Morgan Wallen and Florida Georgia Line and Marshmallow and um, Cadillac 3, I think they're called. That slow rolling song. Love that song. We were just jamming and we were having so much fun while we were painting and just having a big, huge dance party. So the wall is done. And I'm hoping tomorrow we can start putting the solar equipment up on it. it. Sounds so exciting. Oh my gosh, to have solar is gonna be so amazing. To just have power to everything all night long, all day long, whenever we want it, whenever we need it, it's gonna be it's so wonderful and it's gonna be powered by the sun, so it's even better. Yes, let's do this off-gridness. So fun. Our little five-year-old Ricky got in here. She played a little Cinderella, swept up the floor. She said she had a fun time doing it, so that's pretty cool. All right, where are we gonna go? We're gonna go look for flowers. We're gonna yeah. go to flower hunt. Yeah. See if we can find some stuff. And we're gonna bring you back some flowers. She deserves it. Yeah, she Mother's Day's coming up. Yeah, so we're gonna get her some flowers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're we'll back. Ma, ma, ma. Hey, look, we're gonna go like 10 miles an hour. That's why they're not wearing helmets. Grab it. Ready? 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 Ready